high school, and I came up, we started talking about moles. For whatever reason, it just confused me. I think part of it is that it it's the beginning of the word molecule, and somehow I got confused with that. Eventually, moles clicked, and then I, I wonder why it's so confusing. But I know it's confusing for a number of people. Anyone happen to know what a mole is? Based upon from some of your looks, uh, some of you have at least heard of it. And then there's a what if uh, article on what happens if you had a mole of moles. I don't want that one. All right, a mole is just normal. like a dozen is twelve, a score is twenty, a pair mm -hmm. is two, a mole. It's just a number. And that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If I had a mole of eggs, I'd have a slew of them. So you can have a mole of anything, just like you can have a dozen of anything. I have no idea how I came up with that number. This is known as Avogadro's number. Something like that. Uh, that might be an I there, I'm not sure. Oh my god, there's a number. He somehow came up with it, and that seems to be the standard that they're going by when they came up with this. So if I've had that many sodium atoms, that's the amount of mass in grams. <clears throat> now, it turns out that's also roughly the number of protons and neutrons in the typical atom. So the sodium here, 22.989, so atomic mass of sodium, 22.9897 something? 707. If you round that off, what do you get? So a sod the typical sodium atom has about 23 nucleons. Well, look at the atomic number. I think it was 11. So that 20, so 23 nucleons, of which 11 are protons. Therefore, the typical atom has how many neutrons? Sorry, that's okay. Because I can have more neutrons or fewer neutrons in there, but they're not as stable. Because again, what makes it sodium is the number of protons. The number of neutrons is just sort of filler in some sense. If I make the if I put too many neutrons in there, yeah, I've got a lot more strong force involved, but I'm pushing protons farther and farther away from each other, and eventually one of those protons can go flying off. Or if I have too few, the protons are too close to each other, not enough holding it together, and those protons can go flying off. So there is a, a stable number for a lot of the elements. The higher up you get, the less stable it becomes. And that's what I want to talk about with atoms. Let's see if there's something else. So we have these three major particles right here that make up the atom, except then again, are they made up of something? Well, maybe. 
current theory says that the neutrons and protons, these nucleons, are made up of something else. And they are made up of quarks. There are six types of quarks. Up, down, top, bottom, strange charm. Each of those quarks has different flavors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's all sorts of theories that gets into this. And then the electrons, are they made up of something? Uh, we don't know. There is a currently a theory out there that electrons and quarks are made up of these things called prions. For those who have had bio, it's not those prions. I don't know why you borrowed the name, but there's a theory that these are all made up of prions. The trouble is, we don't really have an experiment to know if these exist. Based upon our theories, quarks, there's strong evidence for quarks existing. However, we can't isolate one. Because if I have enough energy, let's say I've got a proton here and it's got an up, up, down quark in it, which it's supposed to, if I put enough energy into it so I can split that proton apart and pull one of those uh, pull one of the quarks out of it, so much energy is released when I do that, it creates another pair of quarks. And so we can't get a single quark, we end up getting, this still has three quarks in it, and this has two quarks in it. Creating matter out of energy. <clears throat> Questions here? Down, top, bottom. So up, down, top, bottom, charmed, and strange. Generally symbolized by just the first letter. They have no particular meaning other than whoever came up with it first, I think it was uh, Murray Gilman. Uh, he figured that start out with basics up, up and down and then later came up with charmed and strange and then top and bottom is the, the last they're the heaviest of the quarks top and bottom are the heaviest yes thus leading to just hilarious physics humor uh doing topless physics and bottomless physics <laughs> You wake up in the middle of the night laughing it's because you're getting good. All right, obviously, we've got these three things here. We have potentially smaller objects. At this point, the standard model quarks exist. Prions, that's just fanciful. That's a theorist going. I need to publish. Let's see. Aren't I? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's make this up. I know we can't experiment on it yet, so I'll be dead before they find out I'm a fraud. <laughs> now, as I take these atoms and start combining them with other atoms, I obviously am creating molecules. And then you keep going and eventually you get matter. So let's do a transition into states of matter. What are the four basic states of matter? That's one of them. So we'll say the fourth one here. I mean, for the most part, that's what we deal with them regularly. Uh, that is potentially a state of matter. We're still questioning what it actually is. Uh, Plasma. Now, for those who have biology, this is not blood plasma. It got the name though because the person who named it was looking at some plasma and said, gosh, that looks a lot like blood plasma. 
we'll give it the same name because that won't be confusing. Plasma are dissociated atoms. They're atoms that, with so much energy that the electrons and the nucleus have separated and are not attached to each other anymore. So the electrons do not hang with the nucleus anymore. Now, there are certain properties of solids, liquids, and gases, which is the, basically the bulk of chapters 11 through 14. Chapter 12 deals with solids. Chapter, see that was 12. Chapter 13 is liquids. Chapter 14 is gas. But there are certain common things to all of them. Density. It's probably the big one. Density and pressure. It's probably the two big quantities, which involves all three of these. So let's talk about density. What is density? Okay, conceptually. What about a non-conceptual and more mathematical answer? Because who doesn't love more mathematical answers? Yeah. So first off, the symbol, I don't know if symbol is used in whatever textbook you used before. In physics, we like to use the rho. into a very small space, I get a much higher density, which goes to how tightly things are packed together. Now, before mass communication or easy communication, whatever standard you were coming up with had to come up, you had to come up with something that was easily translatable across the world. It's not like you could say, you build this really nice piece of equipment here, and then you can figure out a standard. So they had to come up with another standard. And at least in the, well, frankly, probably the European culture, uh, water was rather common, and so they chose water as a standard here for density. And so the density of water is approximately equal to one gram per cubic centimeter. Now we know now that it fluctuates some from that, but this at least gave a starting point for people doing testing. And I suspect the Europeans didn't really care if anyone else was testing the stuff outside of Europe. A cubic centimeter. There's another name for that, of course. What is a cubic centimeter equal to? Centimeter cubed. That is true. Uh, also, cc's. The milliliter. Like, is it one L or two L's? I think it's two. <clears throat> Not meter, meter. Mm -hmm. 
So if you see in some documentation, they talk about cubic centimeters one place, and they start talking about milliliters, and they're interchangeable. So how many milliliters are in a liter? Random guess or just makes sense? Good guess. How many millimeters are in a meter? Uh, there's still a question in your voice on that one, but yes, it is a thousand. So I got a thousand milliliters. Uh, it's one liter. How many grams in a kilogram? Fun with units. <laughs> so if I'm looking at the density of water as one gram per cubic centimeter, grams and cubic centimeters, that's so several decades ago. Uh, what about kilograms per cubic meter? Let's do it. Let's figure out what is the density of water in standard units, what are now considered standard units. All right, so one gram, uh, let's see. So I want to convert one gram over a cubic centimeters. First, let's get it into kilograms per cubic centimeter. So X over, uh, let's not do it that way. Let's do it more efficient way. I want to get rid of grams, so I'm going to multiply by something with grams on the bottom. I want kilograms, so I put kilograms on top. And now I just have to stick in the numbers. That's one kilogram, 1,000 grams. The numerator and denominator are equal to each other, so all I'm doing is multiplying by one. Because the math people tell me if I multiply by one, whatever I get, it's gotta be equal to what I started with. So one divided by a thousand, so I get 0 0.001 kilograms per cubic centimeter. Not shocking. Well, none of this would be shocking. Now we need to get those cubic centimeters into meters. How many centimeters in a meter? I think you said the same answer as you said before. No, 100. 100, oh, okay. Thank you, sorry about that. So I got 0 0.001 kilograms over centimeter, over centimeters cubed. So I'm gonna multiply by, see I wanna get rid of centimeters. I wanna get meters and I got 100 here, except I need to convert three of these things. I got three centimeters down here. It's centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So I'm gonna multiply cubed. So I got 0.001 times 100 cubed, which gets me 1,000. So I get 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So if I took that's roughly a meter tall ish. And over somewhere near the top. That's approximately one square meter. If I then came out of here. So imagine this, I got a box out here, one cubic meter. How many of these could fit into that? Let's make it more. If, if I were pureed, how many of these would fit into this thing? Into this one cubic meter box? So we have a guess at two, anyone else? We'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> Just picture my the volume I have right now and a cubic meter. Yeah, that's good. Not here. 
Stacy feels very confident with this too. Ten. I wrote ten. Ten knees would fit in there? How pureed are you? <laughs> <laughs> I've been liquefied. Figure it out. All right, I weigh about 220 pounds. What is that in newtons? What's the conversion? So this is to newtons as 4.45 newtons per pound. Four, 4 4.45 newtons to one pound. So 4.45 newtons to one pound. I set it for fractions, so I got pounds over newtons on both sides. Um, this is my unknown right here, so I need to cross multiply. So 220 times 4.45. Nine seven nine. So my weight is about nine hundred and seventy nine newtons. What is my mass? Well, I know that that's equal to mg. That's my weight. Mg is about nine point eight. So that'd be nine hundred and seventy nine newton divided by nine point eight meters per second squared. So my mass is about 100 kilograms. Now you will see that, I guess in the textbook, the front cover, no, it's the back 